krill are tiny crustaceans that got a moment in the spotlight during the 2011 animated film Happy Feet 2. Well, we are krill. We are meant to look the same. Not me, Bill. There's only one of me in all the world. I am one in a krillion. Krill are an important part of the Antarctic food web that feeds whales, seals, penguins, and people. The tiny animals are known for their large underwater swarms. So this is all we are, lunch. To think we spent our whole lives not knowing the truth. <laughs> Goodbye, Krill World. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration scientists have tracked fluctuating krill populations for years. Noah's Christian Reese says it's part of an international effort. So we study krill so that we understand whether its trends in abundance are likely to be influenced by how much fishing effort we do, but also whether that fishing effort will then impact the upper trophic levels like penguins and seals. But packing up a research vessel and traveling to the bottom of the world takes time and money. Both are in short supply at a federal agency with an eye on shrinking budgets. So Reese says his team hopes to do much of that work with autonomous drones. We can collect data on the water conditions. We can collect data on how much food is out there for krill. And then literally we can collect data on how much biomass of krill there is. Anthony Casio handles one of two Teledyne manufactured undersea gliders. Okay, I'll go up a little bit. Hold the outside. He's inside a unique lab at the Southwest Fisheries Science Center in La Jolla. All right, let it go. Yeah, it looks good. You got the tail? All right, let's take it up. The 66-foot-long tank here holds more than 520,000 gallons of seawater. Let's go south. That makes it large enough to put one of the gliders through its paces. All right, let's put it down. You got it, Stephanie? Once in the water, the glider software takes over. At the surface, it'll connect with a satellite. And then it'll go get its GPS coordinates, make sure it knows where it's at, figure out where it's going based off of the directions we told it, and then it set, starts to dive, like right now it's starting to dive. Today, the mission is a couple of routine dives inside the large tank. The watertight drone is slow, but deliberate. These are our deep gliders, so they go to 1,000 meters, and these are also uh, the biggest gliders that Teledyne has manufactured. Jen Walsh is one of three pilots that will watch over the drones on their long winter mission in the Antarctic. She says the machines will do most of the work when they're in the field. They'll dive and surface as they go back and forth over a pre-planned survey area. Piloting is mostly a hands-off operation. If the glider is in an area of not very complex, or complex bathymetry, we're not worried about ice where it is, maybe it's pretty far offshore at this point, sometimes that just means keeping an eye on it, making sure it's surfacing when we anticipate that it's going to surface, and sometimes I won't have to get it or give it any direction at all. The vessels will have to navigate very cold and possibly rough seas. A lot can go wrong. Wall says the drones do surface and check in regularly, and she can monitor the gliders in San Diego on any internet-connected computer. There's the connections. When the glider surfaces and connects to satellite, it has a very specific ding-ding sound that it makes, and it, it is like a Pavlovian response. My husband at home <laughs> will hear it. Oh, your glider's up. <laughs> um, and it just means it's connected, which is good, because uh, if it's doing 1,000-meter dives, which it's going to do in the Antarctic, that can take up to four hours. Research biologist Anthony Cassio dropped the drones into the water off the coast of San Diego. The vessel spent two weeks at sea practicing maneuvers over and around the San Diego trough, which is just off the coast of La Jolla. NOAA officials say the vessels will head south this fall for their first research mission in the Antarctic. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.